you have found yourself on Locked On Bulls. On today's episode, me and Pat will be talking about our reaction to the Suns game, who are the real Bulls, and also previewing the game against the Toronto Raptors coming up tonight. All that on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is presented by Bet Online. Pat, we got some topics to get into today. First off, we got to react to this game that happened going into the weekend, the Bulls versus the Suns, man. Uh, I, uh, we, we were really hoping for a win. The Bulls needed a win. They're on a bad losing streak. They they Out of their, their end-of-season West Coast trip, no wins over the course of that trip. <laughs> to end it on the game against the Suns and in the manner in which they ended it, DeMar and Zach both. I think this is one of the first games that we have. I'd have to go and research it, but have we had any game this season in which they both played and they both have been sub 20 points in a game? Pat, what was your reaction to seeing this game? Um, Y'all can see my reaction over on the Windy City Breeze. Uh, I absolutely threw a table <laughs> by the fourth quarter. Like, dog, I couldn't. That's not even a metaphor for something. I legitimately threw a table. Like, I couldn't believe that my team, after getting beat by a Sacramento team and being down by 20 at the half, that same Sacramento team that was down 30 at the half to Boston, uh, what, two days later? Mm -hmm. That you looked at that team, lost to them, and then said, you know what? We have zero fight. Zero anger, zero punch back in us at all. And I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't know what the – like. I, I was searching for answers in that game. The defensive intensity was off. We talked about as we've talked about in every single Bulls loss this year. Why the heck is the corner three – wide open every single time. I don't know if it's DeMar not getting over. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's Zach not getting over. But here's the thing. Yeah. For the first time, I watched a Bulls offense that had no answers. And I told y'all, going in versus this Phoenix team, this Phoenix defense is a problem. Mikel Bridges could legitimately be defensive player of the year. This Phoenix team defensively, Gets the job done. And guess what? The Bulls had no answers. But my, my thing would, I'd have been cool with it if it was like, they just shut us down. We we got outworked. Dog, just missing open shots. This is the second best three-point shooting team in the NBA. We are. The, the, the 36 inches of bull head back here. We're the second best three-point shooting team in the NBA. And we couldn't knock down a three-pointer to save our lives. And they were wide open. They were basically saying, we'll let you do whatever you can to get back into that game. We were 7 for 27 from the three-point line. Not a lot of wins you're going to get in that dog. And so to me, like, bro, I the, the, the Bulls broke me on that one. They broke me on that one. And, and it left me trying to figure out what this team really is and what this team has inside it to push it to that next level because as much as we all hate this right this team hasn't been here before mm -hmm. this isn't like this is a they they've done this before they've they've been in the game they've been in these moments but they haven't and so they're trying to figure out what the heck to do to get through these moments while hopefully getting healthy i think we thought that getting healthy would do a lot more but i mean let me ask you dog like does this seem like a case of like you're working back in caruso you're working, you're trying to find the offense, trying to find what's working best for you, trying to find your rotation again. Does it seem like just the chemistry of this team is thrown off by guys coming back? I don't, I, I personally don't think it's the chemistry being because guys coming back. It really, to me, in watching the games and watching the way that the Bulls are being defended, it to me looks like a team that the league has figured out. And this usually doesn't happen into maybe year two of a team being together, right? Or year three of a team being together. We have yeah. seen over the course of a single season, the Bulls go from one of the offenses that it was like, hey, Zach and Zach and, and DeMar both get going. They both score 
are averaging over 25 points and and it's difficult for teams to know how to how to how to deal with that Two, in within that same season it now being like teams just know exactly what they're going to do down yeah. the stretch they know exactly what spot demar is trying to get to and they are they are they are pushing people over there to get to him before he really gets to that shot especially in the fourth quarter and what we're seeing too is that and this is why you know, we'll talk about Patrick Williams coming back in a second. And this is not a, a, a shout out at Javante uh, at all, right? Because he's been amazing for us. But one of the things that we're starting to see is that because he's not looked at as a as a three-point threat, his man is the one that's cheating off yeah. to come to that mid-range spot to, 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 to rotate out on DeMar before he can get, get situated for that shot. And the Bulls are not their offense is stagnated and it's and that's what worries me the most about this right is the defense thing i do think the defense is eventually going to come around i they call me irrational whatever i do trust that that's going to happen <laughs> but the but the offensive side of it the fact that how it looks like teams are defending this when a team like sacramento comes in and is looking like they are defensively prepared for exactly what the bulls are going to do that scares me for the playoffs because we're facing some of the best tacticians as far as other coaches in the whole NBA when yeah. you look at it. And because of that, it's like, hey, if y'all can't figure this out, playoffs are going to be ugly. Ugly. Yeah, and it it's weird, right? Because it's like there wasn't there wasn't much to figure out before, right? Like, yeah. Is it now DeMar says he's not mentally or physically tired, but if we're being real, right, there wasn't much to figure out before. Like DeMar DeRozan, Jay it in your face. You got to take this with you. Go home. I'm sorry. You lost the game. Zach Levine, too big, too fast, too strong, able to blow past you. Now injury playing a little bit more into Zach, uh, uh, um, but we saw him get to the bucket. We've seen him be able to kind of do some of those things that we've said he needs to do. So to me, it's like, okay, like how do we figure out what's working well but the part to me that that has been taken away from the bulls the most is like like you said listen there's been moments where javante green Derek jones jr uh, uh uh troy brown have been able to knock down shots when they're wide mm -hmm. open that make an impact on this game they're 10 points 11 points make an impact on this game kobe white where the heck is kobe going i've been defending kobe all season talking about listen you gotta let him come back from the shoulder he's starting to get hot now he's figuring mm -hmm. it out now dog you don't have the luxury to just disappear on us like that like you're the scoring off of the bench unfortunately and like this is the reason why people wanted kobe white out of out of town like I love Kobe, but you can't give me those games where, like, yeah, I've got 15, 20 from you, and you also give me those games where I got six from you and expect that you're going to be the re the first guy off of the bench. Like, everybody keeps saying he's that microwave guy. Y'all understand how Vinny Johnson was. He knocked down shots, and if he wasn't knocking down shots, get out the game. So, like, it, it's it's – it's like the team, like, yes, they figured out things for DeMar and Zach, but those were also things that were just kind of unstoppable. Like, they weren't like, I need to figure this out. Like, DeMar would literally two dribble, pull up, cash. Like, yeah. it's the reason I, the kid was like, y'all telling me Michael Jordan couldn't thrive in this NBA? Like, like <laughs> I'm watching it night in and night out. Like, legitimately, two dribble, pull up, cash, shimmy shake, spin move, fade, cash. All of a sudden, we're not seeing that cash go in. Now we need the production from the other guys on the floor. Now we need the Ayo DeSumo, the Javante Greens, the Kobe Whites, the Derrick Jones Juniors. Those guys gave you two, three, four points. That's a big loss. That's a big loss yeah. night in and night out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's difficult. What I will say to your point on Kobe, I think that Kobe's given us more even when his shot's not falling than he has at any point of his career. His weak side defense is taking leaps and bounds uh, over where it was. But – Bench scoring is absolutely important, especially for a playoff team. And the Bulls yeah. currently right now rank 28th in bench scoring. They ranked 29th before Kobe came back. Now, it had got gone up when Kobe was on, and it's gone right. down now since Io is in the starting lineup. Kobe hasn't been scoring as consistently. And I wonder if this in this offseason, the Bulls are going to address a more – solid bench scoring overall for multiple people because when you look at the bulls what they're bringing off the bench it's not really a lot of people with scoring potential outside of alice caruso and kobe white right now now when you put io back in there but then still that's all three guards now derrick jones jr can be a scorer but i think one thing that we're seeing with derrick jones jr is that his 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 lack of aggression scoring wise yeah. is starting to be a thing too um but yeah this 
I don't know, man. I don't, I don't. There's no real answer that we have for right now on how the Bulls or what the Bulls need to do or what they can do better against the Suns. We'll and we'll get into our, our next topic where we're going to ask who are the real Bulls. But before we get into that, we got to talk about our first sponsor today, and that is Built Bar. Now, Pat. 130 cal calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. That is what you're going to find in most Built Bar flavors. Now, you've been asking people if they tried the puffs. Well, guess what? I tried the puffs. They're delicious. They're delicious. Don't and the fact that it's, that it's covered in 100% real chocolate is crazy to me to be able to get the type of nutrition that you can get from Built Bars. It's just wild to me. And then yeah. when you compare that to other candy bars, because that's exactly what Built Bars taste like, is candy bars, which usually carry over 240 calories and 30 grams of sugar and huge amounts of net carbs. It's amazing what Built Bar has fit into a bar that, that it tastes good, that is good for you as well. And so what Built Bar has, they have a, a great offer uh, for uh, members who listen to Locked On. The offer is if you go to BuiltBar.com and use the promo code LOCK15, you get 15% off your order. That's the code LOCKED ON for 15% on your order. And make sure you tell them that Hayes and Pat from Locked On Bulls sent you over there. So, Pat, next uh, topic that we got Who are the real Bulls? Who are the Bulls for? This is a question that I don't think anybody really has the answer to, but we're going to try to answer it here. What do you What do you think? Who are the real bulls, Pat? It's a tough question, right? Because you're you're looking at, and it kind of goes back to the topic we just had on the roster construction. Like mm -hmm. this team was built for three guys that can score the ball really, really, really freaking well mm -hmm. in defense. You had that defensive identity. You were top five in the NBA. You were doing things the right way versus good teams, by the way, might I add. I know, I know the rankings have changed, but it was versus top teams in the NBA at that time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that's gone out the window. This team isn't built to be an offensive juggernaut. This team is built to be a defensive monster with really freaking good scores that can get the job done. Look look at the names here. We're talking about Zach Levine, uh, uh, Nikola Vucevic, and DeMar DeRozan. Mm -hmm. Maybe we throw Kobe White in there. But Kobe White was up and down. Kobe White was an iffy one. But look at the rest of these guys. Javante mm -hmm. Green, defensive guy. Io DeSumo, defensive-minded point guard. Uh, 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 Alex Caruso, defensive juggernaut. Derrick Jones Jr., ton of length. Tristan Thompson now, ton of length. Lonzo Ball, great ball, great facilitator to get those offensive guys going, but an excellent defender on the other, an excellent two-way player. Patrick Williams coming back. We don't even know if he can play offense right now because he won't take a shot. But what we do know is that he can stand in front of LeBron James and, and make his life a little difficult. Yeah. This team is built to be a defensive juggernaut, and it's not. And the identity of this team has absolutely gone out the window in these last few weeks. And I'm, I'm going to be real with you. If you cannot find a way to get that identity back, if you cannot find a way to get that defensive strength back, this mm. team is the team that we've seen these last three games. A team that can be beaten by anybody. Because if one of your three is not going off for 25 plus, you're in trouble. Mm. Mm. And so it, it's interesting to hear you say that the Bulls were built to be a defensive juggernaut because coming into the season, a lot of people are the defense was the one thing that people really questioned that what how good were the Bulls going to be on defense. Yeah. And while I, I've said over on Chicago Bulls Central is that, you know, while the Bulls weren't facing the best competition defensively when they were ranked in the top five, even I, the thing is, is that it, let me let me give it some credit to say, all right, even if people want to say. They weren't facing the top teams. Let's even drop it down and say, all right, the Bulls would have been in the top 10 at least defensively. Yeah. With what they can do offensively and what they have shown, even in losses and what they can do offensively, you give a you pair a top 10 defense with that, that is a that is a juggernaut of a team. You know what I'm um, saying? And, yes, we've, we've lost. All of our defenders have been out at one point, right? We lost Javante Green for stretches at, at one point. Yes. We lost Derrick Jones Jr. We lost Lon. We still don't have Lonzo back. We lost Patrick Williams. Io's been in the starting lineup. Russo's been gone. So I yep. understand why things have gone the way that they've gone to a degree. But what I'm seeing out there personally for me, and I know I'm not a coach, is a lack of effort at times. And to me, regard the one thing everybody can give is effort, right? 
And when you have a lack of effort, and I know 100%. we're looking at people who were supposed to be second and third string guys now getting heavy minutes. Well, that's kind of changed now with Tristan and Caruso coming back. When you don't have that effort and, and activity on defense, I, it almost doesn't matter the skill level of defenders that you have. People focus too much on what type of one-on-one defender people are, where team defense is, is a thing. When you yeah. look at some of those top those Tom Thibodeau teams on any team that he's been on, he hasn't always had the best defensive personnel, but they go out and they give great defensive effort because that is what's coached there. And again, yeah. I'm not one of those people who want to throw everything because the players have to look at themselves and ask themselves some questions about why they're being lax as well. But it's just something going on there with that that the defensive end has dropped so much that it's like, hey, man, listen, the playoffs are around the corner. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what else to, to say to motivate to motivate y'all. And I'm yeah. I'm hoping we with this week, the Bulls have four games this week that they look at themselves and say, hey, we need we need all four of these. I'm not saying they necessarily need to get all four of them, yeah. but they need to go in that with. No, we cannot lose a game this week because, listen. It. I, I'm not a sky is falling Bulls fan. This season kind of is what it's going to be. So when you ask me to answer, who are the Bull? Who are the Bulls really? Who are the real Bulls? Looking at them right now, I say that they are a team that has a lot of a lot of talent, but they are not hitting their stride right now. And I don't know what it is. I really thought the season was going to be flipped. Right? How we're playing now, I kind of expected us to come into the season playing with, and by the end, we we played like we did at the beginning of the season. Yeah. And the fact that it's been flip flopped is like that's just mind boggling to me. Well, people people end up adjusting to you. Tristan told you this is the time of year where playoff teams, championship level teams, adjust to what they're going to do versus you in the playoffs. It's not going to be the same schemes. It's not going to, and I think we've seen that reflected. Right? Like. Post All Star break, all you've seen is uh, going at the Bulls is run, pick and roll. Yeah, run, pick and roll. Keep running, pick and roll until they figure it out. Keep running, pick and roll. Keep going at it. Keep dominating. And so in the playoffs, it's just about beating you. It's not about beating you, pretty. It's just about winning the game. So they don't care if they run the same play on you a hundred times in a game. You know why? Because they're winning the game. And if they win four of them, they move on to the next round. And so you're seeing that take place in the season a little bit more. And so to me. I think my biggest fear with this team is that they get in their own heads and they don't get back because, right, like there's games where the Bulls score. Legitimately, we've seen the Bulls score 125 mm -hmm. and lose because they couldn't play defense. And we thought that for some reason, Alice Caruso was the key to that. Mm -hmm. And he's a big piece of that defense, but he is not the key. There's no effort out there consistently. And so to me, like, I'm looking at this team and I'm saying, the to me, on the offensive side, the fact that we had games where we were getting 130 points in, in wins was like, yo, like, these mugs are really going off right now. Like, they are going hand. Like, Javante Green don't shoot like this. Derrick Jones Jr. don't cash like this. Three, four, mm -hmm. three-pointers a game. That's not normal. But... What was normal was these mugs could play defense, and I wasn't seeing that. And now we're kind of seeing that play out. Where listen, I, out of out of the top three guys, we shouldn't expect anybody on this team to give us more than twenty. That's on the court right now. I don't expect anybody else on this roster to give us fifteen. Maybe Kobe. Yeah. But I can't expect it on a consistent basis. But I I don't look at this roster and say, yeah, no, he's a, he's a seventeen point a night guy. He's a 15-point-a-night guy. I look at his roster, and I'm like, hey, if all of y'all give me seven, hmm. we can win this game. That's a nice way of looking at that. I've never thought about it that way. So, like, the, the 130s was mind-blowing to me. I'm like, we are offensively getting it, and they can't score over 100. Yeah. Now they're scoring 129, and we can't get over 100. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think and you know to, to kind of bring everything that you that you just said home, you know if every other player if on this team outside of a Vooch needs to be a little bit more consistent as well. Like I'm not okay. a, one of those of those people completely down on Vooch because he's still statistically a top ten center by every on a down season. But yeah. with that being said, we need a little bit more from Vooch. But then if you really do look at it, if every other player on this team that gets minutes can hit two to three shots in a game with what Demar and Zach can give us. And playing solid defense, uh, listen, 
It, but that's the part that's missing, the solid yeah. defense. Yeah. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's the part to me where I'm like, I I would love like if if we had a game, legitimately, if we had a game like we had in Utah. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a great shooting night, but guess what? Io gave you 15. Javante gave you five. Caruso gave you two. That's a little low. Kobe gave you 12. Tristan gave you five and five. DeMar gave you 25. Uh, 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 Zach gave you 33. Vooch gave you 10 and 11. Not a great game from Vooch. Javante gave you five. Like, if you have a game like that and you play well defensively, you should win that game. But we're not seeing the play well defensively part that keeps people from putting you from from uh, uh, being over the top. Now, granted, it took Donovan Mitchell uh, uh, a record breaking night yeah. to to really put you away by nine or or what they what we lose by nine. No, we lost big in that one, didn't we? By fifteen, yeah. Well, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, we there suck. you go. There oh, you go. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, but I'll tell you this right now as we're moving on. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and rocking with us as always, man. Uh if you're still betting on the Chicago Bulls, stop betting with your heart. I'm going to tell you that right now. But it is that time of year again. Unfortunately, Illinois basketball came to an end today. But uh, as college, as the college basketball tournament is upon us, Bet Online has us ready from the latest odds, contests, player props. BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your betting needs and info. They still remain the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports and wagering needs, information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. You can head over to the website and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Make sure to check out Bet Online where the game starts. All right. And we got one last thing to do. Pat, and that is talk about this game coming up tonight as of the listeners listening to this against the Toronto dub, Raptors. Guys. Now, let's get a dub. Let's get a dub. We, we played dub. really good against the Raptors so far. We have one loss against the Raptors right this season, um, but we've beaten them twice, I believe. Uh, we lose to the Raptors. Uh, yeah, go we ahead. Lose, we lose to the Raptors. This, I thought we beat them all three. I know we beat them all three times. Up. Okay. Maybe it was, maybe it was close one, one time. Game. Bad. No, no, we did lose. We lost in overtime to them uh, by seven on February 3rd. But other than that, we've beat them. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought we lost to them once, but we shouldn't have. But with that being said, uh, I, as everyone knows by me, I, I hate Raptors fans, not ra the Raptors, because Raptors fans have become very much like Drake fans. They don't really know hip hop. It's like Raptors fans really don't know basketball. They just, their team won one damn title and they think they're the hot shit. But nonetheless, um, <laughs> bro, when the season started, somebody had the nerve to say, the Raptors are the gatekeepers to the to the Eastern Conference playoff race. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. All right, buddy. Um, how did that work out for it's you? It's so season? weird, right? Because, like, the Raptors fan, the few Raptors fans I know are, like, good guys. But then, like, as you see the general consensus, it's more of the guys that, like, run up on Russell Westbrook before a game yeah. and try to trash talk him to his face. Yeah. And it's like, you realize he could fold you four different ways, but – Okay, like that. Keep like the, the more I see, like it's like, oh no, they're not, they're not good guys. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Raptors fans are weird, but uh, this game, the return of Patrick Williams. Hopefully, uh, a Bulls team coming in and refocus. Listen, going winless in a week. I hope that this woke this team up to some things, right? I really do hope that it has because that is not. Listen, you are a playoff team. I don't care where you sit in the playoffs. You are a playoff team to go winless. In a week is a week where you really got to come out of that week looking at yourself like, hey man, we can't have another week like this. That was a dark week, bro. That yeah, hey man, dark listen, week, bro. And it's gonna be even darker if the Bulls start this week off with a loss. Listen, I, you probably won't get a video of me flipping the table, but tomorrow's episode is going to be highly, highly interesting. It may be the first um, appearance of Petty Roosevelt on Locked On, on Bulls, <laughs> um, but you know we're, we're trying to keep that restrained. Uh, but overall in this game, I'm really expecting the Bulls to come out with a defensive effort. And one thing, I'm not putting all this on Patrick Williams, but you do usually see when a team gets a player back, there's yeah. a new level, a new bounce in the whole team step. Not necessarily saying Pat is going to play heavy minutes or anything like that, but I think maybe having his energy back and what what energy he could bring that I know it was a video of him working out with the Windy City Bulls, but behind the back passes, hard dunks, aggression. 
I don't even need to see the offensive side of that. If he can give me some good passes and, and defensive intensity for the, the 10, 12, 15 minutes, however long he plays, I'm really excited for that. But I think this team may come in with some newfound energy just because of having him back and see what they do with him. What do you think about that, Pat? Listen, I, I love when when the, the teams in the league post, like, the player working out <laughs> with the G League team or, yeah. like, it's him working out with like the former players at the Y or whatever it is. It's like, all right, yeah, I enjoy seeing this. I hope Patrick Williams can do this in a real game. But, dog, he's supposed to be dogging them. Like, he in the oh, NBA. Yeah. He's like, a fourth <laughs> overall pick. If he, if he was like, doing anything like, else but dogging them, they, we, they would, that would be a cause for some serious Bro, concern. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I want to <laughs> be at the practice. So I can see, like, is somebody blocking his shot? Like, is somebody <laughs> working him out? Because that's the dude we need to be looking at. So, like, yeah. but it, it is good to see Pat Will back. Uh, hopefully he, he makes an impact. This, this is all I'm – I'm not looking for, especially coming into this Toronto game, right? You have to start off the, the week with a win. Toronto's no slouch, by the way. Toronto getting busy out here. If you really want to – I feel like because they're, they have seventh next to their – name we feel like we're in a better position than them they are legitimately what two games behind us right now they're 40 and 31 we're 41 and 29 like we're we're not that much better than them this is a this is a competitive game that we have to get ready to play here and those same raptors set one six out of the last 10 where we've won two out of our last 10 you know what i'm saying so it's like we we're not we're not really coming into this feeling like, hey, we finna dominate y'all again. I'm coming into this like, man, um, let's slow down Scotty Barnes and uh, try and play some good defense. You know what I'm saying? So, like, to me, it's uh, – uh, and, by the way, a Raptors team that, again, beat a, a Philadelphia team that is real, as as uh, they would say. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll see about that. But, but, uh, <laughs> but I just I, – I look at this game and I say this is the game where, to me – whether he comes off of the bench or he starts, Patrick Williams needs to play. And unfortunately, because of the time of the season, he might need to play heavy mm-hmm. because you need to figure out how to stop. This is not a team that's going to come in and say, oh, let's not run pick and roll. They're going to go right at you and try and do the same things with Pascal Siakam that uh, 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 Phoenix just did that. Utah just did that. The Kings just did that. The Sun or that uh, uh, the Spurs have done to us. Like, like they're going to use that similar game plan and try to get the job done in a similar way. So I want to see. Unfortunately, right away, Pat will insert it defensively to see. Hey, can you stop this? Because he can. I love Vooch, but Vooch can't stop the pick and roll. And he's being put in a a horrible position to try and slow it down. I don't know if that means you start him right away, but you got to find a way to find a piece that changes what has happened for you recently. And I don't know if P-Will is that piece, but at a minimum, I know he brings an IQ on the defensive end that helps you on that side. And I think to me, this is the perfect game to, to test it out with. This is the perfect game to try and figure it out against. And so... I, I have the Bulls getting a win here. I think that they are a better team than the Raptors, but I don't think that it's like we felt in the beginning where it was like the Raptors were out of the playoffs and we were like, number one, like, stop. Like, you can't hold our beer. Like, no, this is, we're, we're drinking the same beer right now. It's, it's, <laughs> we, we both sipping old style, unfortunately. Like, it's not, it's not crazy right now. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Like, yeah, I mean, we've in like in that overtime game, we've seen the Raptors can kick it in in a def- defensive intensity that we just have not seen from this Bulls team in a while. Yeah, yeah if the Bulls are coming in, expect or any Bulls fan expecting this to be easy, no, I expect the Bulls to be able to win because I feel like we have more talent. But with the way that the, that the basketball that's been played lately, you yeah. can't count out the Toronto Raptors at all. You can't. And you know what I find is funny in the East too, and this is one thing that it's I I, I would I would. I want to know with with 12 games left in the season, right? I think for most teams, mm-hmm. has there ever been a time where a conference has only had one team be the one that has 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 their their play in tech? I mean, their playoff technically locked in. Every other team, it's Milwaukee and, and, and Philly included, statistically have not locked in a playoff spot yet, which yeah. is just wild. How competitive the East has been this season. Yeah, it, it's it's ridiculously close. And that's why I said, like, for the people that were like, like, I mean, let's be real. Nobody wants to play Brooklyn first round. Like, that's the yeah. one. Okay. Nobody wants to be the one seed. Miami, you got it. Ringo. 
<laughs> but um, <laughs> other than that, like, I don't feel good about any matchup that's mm. in the play. I don't feel like we're gonna four zero anybody. Yeah, you can't. I can't say the Bulls are gonna four zero the seven seed, and that's Toronto. You might. I think they'll beat them. I think it would be a six game series. But again. I don't know anymore because this is a very different Bulls team than what we've seen most of the season. And unfortunately, heading into the playoffs, it's a very what have you done for me lately mentality. And with this team, it's even more so, right, because you haven't seen it before. Like if it was if it was like like Brooklyn, they're an eighth seed. Nobody thinks they're an eighth seed. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going into the playoffs like nah, Brooklyn, we will work them out. Like, no, they've been here before. We I, I like like Brooklyn's like, no, they've been like a game away from the Eastern Conference Finals. And if Kevin Durant wore a size 14 and not a 14 and a and a quarter, <laughs> they'd be in that mug. So yeah. like it's 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 stuff like that where like you don't feel great about this team heading into the playoffs at the moment because you felt like they needed that momentum going into the playoffs here to feel good about them keeping that going and catching that hot streak like Atlanta did last year. And so to me, it it's about when you win, when you get it done, how you're able to do it. And listen, there's going to be some adversity, Bulls fans. They've got to overcome. There's going to be some things that the Bulls are going to have to go through to become a championship team. Well, see, we remember Jordan 90 through 98. We don't remember Jordan was drafted in 84. Mm. There was a lot of adversity on the way to 90. And now because it's 2022, we feel like, oh, you can't be looking to win or holding on to players for more than four years. If it don't work after that, you got to get rid of them. Like, I, it, we're going to have to go through these adversities to get there. The teams that – I'll say this. Think about this, right? The teams that don't go through the adversity, where are they the next year? That's a great point. That's a great point. I and I I, I still and I, I know it's probably irrational. I still do trust this team ability to get it together. I really do, and I'm going to hold on to that faith and, and, until until we are eliminated. And I and even then, whenever it happens, whenever the Bulls go out the playoffs, regardless, I still say, hey, we got a front office now that we can look and say, hey, they're probably going to try to figure this out and make sure that we come back vastly improved the following season. So, yeah, it sucks. The way that the season has gone has, has been, you know, it's been frustrating as hell. Like, let's just be clear. I'm not saying that it hasn't been, but we have a nice blueprint to build off of. But I do yeah. want to see them come in today. I mean, yeah, tonight. And really just have a great effort against the Toronto right let's start off let's start off with great with great effort win win or lose let's let's not have the that game where we come in and we're just like the Bulls just dropped the ball completely on defense again yes and then let, let's start stringing some wins together yes. again head, head, heading into the end of the season yeah that's that's all we ask for listen it, you don't got an easy week this week either Bulls you got Toronto yeah. then you got Milwaukee on a back-to-back -back. like it's not gonna be easy for you hey guess what you got the Pelicans the Pelicans absolutely can put up buckets it's not gonna be easy for you the Cla Cavaliers end of the week maybe the, maybe a little maybe a little reprieve with the Knicks maybe maybe but you're working at least the rest of this week so let's just get it done bro I'm I, I don't want to <laughs> flip no more tables man I'm running out of furniture hey man listen Listen, prayers to you and the tables in your household, brother. <laughs> that, is, that is it for us today, fam. Go ahead and give them uh, anything, any part word, social media, and let's go ahead and get up out of here. Hey, man, follow, uh, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls, man. Um, it was a crazy week, so I didn't post much on the Instagram, but uh, we will get back to that, posting on that every single day. So get in tune with us on that as well. And uh, follow your boy at Path the Designer, P-A-T-T-H-E-D-E-S-I-G-N-E. Are we went to public school, but we know how to spell. Uh, follow us at follow me on everything at Path the Designer. Yeah, that's my socials, man. All right, and you can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. You can follow us both at Locked On Bulls and every social media platform. Make sure if you if you want to, if you want to call in, the call in and text line is right there down below in the description. You can go ahead and do that so we can get some more mailbags in. But otherwise, that's it from us for today. For Pat, I'm Hayes. We out. Peace, I was gonna say about that, man. Peace.